Okay. So I call the May 26th meeting of the school committee to order. Um, good evening, everyone. It's great to see such a large crowd here. Um, we're not really used to having significant crowds at our school committee meetings, so uh, we really want to thank everyone for coming this evening. Um, I want to thank Mr. Martin, Dr. Milicheski, and, and many others who are involved in, in having this meeting here tonight and, and their leadership in making this happen. Um, but I also want to thank our hosts here at the Brook Charter High School for welcoming us into this space. Um, it's a remarkable space, first of all. Um, and we did a little bit of research on Brook this week, and um, a couple things that stuck out to me. Every graduating student here is required to take three AP courses, complete three AP courses, and they're required to take three years of computer science. So it's a great example of not only what a great rigorous curriculum for learners looks like, but also what it looks like to really prepare our kids for the world ahead. So thanks to everyone here at Brook for that. Um, tonight's meeting is being recorded by RCTV, so that's why we've got a man with a camera there. Um, it's not being aired live back in Reading, but the recording will be available on YouTube within the next few days, and we expect it will be part of their normal cable rotation as well, so thank you to RCTV for the support. Um, folks who might be regular school committee watchers probably noticed that we're down one member this evening. Uh, our chair, Tom Wise, unfortunately was diagnosed with COVID earlier this week, so of course he couldn't be here. I want to say that um, Tom was a huge advocate for us having this meeting here tonight, and he sends his regrets that he wasn't able to join us. Um, and before we jump in, I had a lot more that I was prepared to say, but given the, uh, the younger audience than we're used to, I, I just want to um, say we'd be remiss if we didn't acknowledge um, things that happened around the country this week and some of the difficult things that have been happening over the last few weeks, which I know have, have worn on many of us and many of our educators, um, and our thoughts go out to those, those families impacted. So, um, with all that as an intro, uh, and moving on from a relatively heavy subject, tonight I think is going to be a fairly positive and celebratory evening, uh, particularly as we hear from Mr. Martin about all the great things that are happening in his leadership um, and a number of the other items on our agenda. So in terms of our agenda, um, we'll start with public comment, so we'll invite anybody who wants to come up and address the committee to do so. Um, public comment is intended for topics that are not on our agenda. So if you want to talk about something that's on the agenda, we just ask you to hold off until that time and, and just raise your hand when the time comes. Um, then we'll move through our, cons our consent agenda. We'll have reports from the staff and then also from members of the committee. Um, and we're going to take new business out of order tonight, so I'll have a motion for that when the time comes. In the new business section, we've got the Students of Color and Allies for Equity, Justice, and Inclusion, as well as the Friends of Ready Metco here who are going to introduce their respective groups and missions, and we're, we're very excited about that. Um, I see some nerves over there, but you guys are going to be great. Um, we'll have Mr. Martin with the, with the METCO program update. We're going to review and approve edits to policy JFBB, which is about school choice. And then Dr. Chatterjee is here from our uh, Libraries, Equity, and Social Justice Division to talk to us a little bit about the, the PEAR group, the advisory group that she's established, uh, and invite us to establish a liaison to that group. Then we'll move on to old business. Um, so uh, a couple weeks ago we established, or a couple of meetings ago, we established the RMHS Track Renaming Committee. Today we'll name the remaining members of that committee. And then our final uh, agenda item will be voting on the final FY23 budget capital plan after town meetings and appropriations. So that's our agenda for tonight. We think it's going to be a relatively brisk one. We're used to four hour meetings, but we don't see that happening this evening. So. Um, that will kick us off with public comment. Is there anybody that wants to speak on anything that's not on the agenda this evening? You can come up and just take the mic if you want to. No? Okay. Uh, all right, so we'll move to the consent agenda. Um, so I'll, I'll just handle the motions tonight to make things easier for us. Um, I move to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? Chuck with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? And it's 5-0. Okay, so moving on to reports. Um, I'll just start maybe at the end of the table here with Ms. Baton. I have no reports. Okay, Dr. Hardy? I have no reports. Dr. Stice? No reports. Mr. Martin? I have a report. You have a report. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'll... oh, no, you have a, you have a whole presentation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll hold off on that. Dr. Milicheski. I just quickly want to say thank you to all the families and all the students here. It's so nice to see you all here to join us for our school committee meeting. I'm especially excited to see so many students of all ages here. So thank you for coming out. I hope you enjoyed the pizza. Uh, it was especially nice for me to come back. I, as, uh, I, was, I spent time here as an educator. I was at the Frederick Middle School at, the, at the Jeremiah Burke High School. So a lot of time at Stash is right around the corner. So when I pulled up, and I brought back a lot of memories for me being back here in the neighborhood. But um, 
I know that so often we ask um, our, our Boston families to make the commitment, uh, our parents to make the commitment to attend school committee meetings by coming to Redmond. And I say even more than that, we ask our students every single day to come on the bus to take the, the trip to Reading. So I think it's a, a small uh, gesture on our part to show, um, for us to come here and have a meeting here. But we know that that uh, is just one night for us. We know it's the day-to-day, -day, the commitment that our families and students make uh, to be a part of our community. We are so thrilled with all of our students that, uh, who are Boston resident students, that you're a part of the Reading Public Schools. So thank you. We are thrilled that you are Reading Rockets, and thank you for being here with us tonight. My updates tonight are all going to come through uh, Millie, um, Arbor J. Thomas. If you don't know Millie, she's the CEO of, um, of Metco. She wanted me to share a couple updates. First, she says that she would have loved to be here tonight. Unfortunately, she had another commitment that ends a little bit later, so she's not able to be here. Um, but she wanted to share, me to share a couple of things. First, she wanted me to invite everyone in the audience to uh, an event next Friday, which is uh, put on by Metco. It's about the history of desegregation in Boston via busing at the Huntington Theater. So again, I'm going to share this information now verbally, but I'll send this all out right to the community too. So if you don't catch this, that's okay. But again, next Friday at Huntington Theater, um, an event and movie showing of the history of desegregation um, via busing uh, at Huntington Theater. Secondly, uh, we know that uh, coming up in a couple of weeks is the conference, the Living the Legacy Conference for Educators on June 10th. Uh, she wanted me to raise the public accountability for our team right here that she'd love to have a full table of Reading representatives. Uh, there's amazing speakers on equity. Uh, we, she's also encouraging any school committee members to participate and attend. Uh, there's Nubian tours happening most weekends during the summer and being led by our youth to learn about civil rights leaders in our community and tour the Metco headquarters exhibit, uh, which shows the history of Metco. Uh, and then lastly, this is a request from everyone here. Uh, she wanted me to share that she needs everyone to call their senators uh, to thank them because yesterday they approved an increase of one million dollars for Metco. Uh, plus, <laughs> plus, in addition to that one million dollars to Metco, five hundred thousand dollars to do equity work. So I think that she and we are really encouraged by that. So thank you to all the senators uh, for their work and advocacy in that process. Uh, most importantly, we are very excited to hear from our, our families. That we're very excited to hear from our students. So here we go. Okay, one thing before we get to the students, we do have liaison reports. Um, I'll just report quickly on, uh, on ARPA, and um, you know, all the members of the committee are certainly well aware of this, but for, for the community and for folks watching at home, um, the ARPA committee did approve the $2 million request that we had to support a new early literacy curriculum, so that's fantastic news. That will go into implementation uh, next year. You know, we've got some principals who are uh, figuring out how that's going to happen, but it's going to happen. Um, so, uh, we also had an ARPA meeting last night where we heard a number of, of additional requests. Um, I think we're getting sort of to the end of the presentations that we're expecting to hear. Um, the survey is open for another few weeks, and then once that closes, the committee will come back together and start doing the hard work of figuring out how to allocate the remaining dollars to many, um, many deserving causes in town. Carla. <laughs> so if I think about it by the time we finish, I will report it out on it. I have no report. Uh, the policy subcommittee met on May 11th, and I will comment more on that when we discuss the policy meeting. Uh, just one quick update. The RCTV board met earlier this week, and one exciting piece uh, or update, Anna Cuevas, who teaches at the high school, will be continuing on next year as well, teaching video production. So we're super excited about that. I remember Sean and I went, attended the audit subcommittee, um, and we voted on the, our, on the um, Reading Municipal Life Department budget. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to go on to new business now. So first, I uh, have a motion to take out of order items E1 through E4. Is there a second? Carla seconds. All in favor? All opposed? All right. Here's 5 0. Okay. So now we're on to uh, some of our guests tonight. So we've got the Students of Color and Allies for Equity, Justice, and Inclusion and the Friends of Reading Metco. Um, who, wants to, uh, who wants to take the mic? Who wants to take the lead? Somebody's going to have to do it. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Welcome. I'm Deja. I'm co-president and 
I'm from Boston. I'm Jeremiah. I'm also co-president. I'm from Reading. I'm Lena Moth, and I'm from Reading. I'm secretary. I'm Aaron Palmer. I'm from Reading. I'm Samaje, an ally, and I'm a Boston resident. Um, my name is Bianca Ferguson. I'm an ally, and I'm a Boston resident. My name is Camille Wilton. I'm the event planner, and I'm also a Boston resident. My name is Nathan Ortelis. I'm an ally, and I'm a Reading resident. guys what EJI stands for. So first we have equity, and that's when there's no favoritism or discrimination. Then there's justice, a concept of more righteousness based on ethics, reason, law, natural law, and religion. And then there's inclusion, and that's when everyone is being included and in a group or structure. Some of our objectives. Yeah. Some, are, some of our objectives are to create awareness, educate on the biggest issue that needs to be talked about, build an understanding of what we feel on a daily basis, and train our community in case you find yourself or anyone in these situations. Um, we wanted to give you guys a sneak peek of what we have in our previous presentations, and so, we have two videos to show you guys, and um, while you guys watch this video, you guys can reflect to yourself how, how you would feel, what you would like to change, and how we can work together to create these changes. Here's a video on generational wealth.
and this is another video that covers one of our topics in our previous presentation. So, it's a 17-year-old named Ronald Vincent at the 2018 Teen Youth Speaks Poetry Slam, and so, yeah. Okay. 
superintendent's the superintendent's office. Okay. Newsletter. 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 You can find it in the newsletter. And so, yeah, thank you guys so much for having us. Bye.
Okay, so our next agenda item is the METCO program update. So Mr. Mark, I will hand it to you. Mark wants everyone back. I'll just ask him. You want to do that? Before I start, um, I think it's good to step I just want to make sure that we all introduce ourselves for everyone in the audience. Obviously, everyone knows me as Curtis Martin, the medical director, and I just want to start at the end and pass the mic down so that you know who we are on the table. Good evening, everyone. My name is Susan Botan. I'm the director of finance and operations for Brady Public Schools. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Hardy and I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Learning and Teaching. Hi, I'm Jen Skies and I'm the Director, I'm, I'm not a Director, I'm the Assistant <laughs> Superintendent for Student Services. Hi everyone, Tom Delixis, I'm the Superintendent. We also have a few of our principals with us too, so we'll ask them to come up and say hello and introduce themselves. Much of their excitement. <laughs> there we go, Ricky. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Beck, I'm the principal of the Killam School. Hi, Beth Leather, principal of Barrow School. Hi. Ricky Shankman, principal at Parker Middle School. Hi. I'm Sean Brandt, I'm a member of the school committee and the current vice chair. Good evening, I'm Carla Nazaro, and I'm a member of the school committee. Good evening, I'm Chuck Robbins. <laughs> Hello, I'm Erin Johnson, also a member of the school committee. Hi, okay. everybody. Sarah McLaughlin, member of the school committee, and Parker Mom. Nobody said what schools their kids go to. Okay. Since we're going back, um, I have children at Joshua Eaton, Parker, and at the high school. <laughs> so my children, at two at, or all of them went through Barrow, and they've all gone through there and Parker and my last one is graduate or has officially graduated and graduates a week from Sunday, I guess. So a lot of a lot of fun years at all three of those schools. I have four children and all of them attended Joshua Eaton, Parker. I have one at the high school, I have two in college and one who just graduated. And I'm, I have the little ones on the committee. Um, I have two at Wood End. Shout out to Miss Crowley's class, yeah. Uh, and I have one more who uh, is in Rise as well. All right, so now I'll hand it off to Mr. Martin. Thank you for that. Good catch. No problem. Thank you. Um, again, thank you everybody for coming out. Um, it seems like just yesterday, it was July 5th, and it was myself, Dr. Hardy, Dr. Melicheski, um, having our first meeting um, in Central Office. And this is where I was pretty much laying out my vision uh, for the MECO program. And that vision was honestly my experience going through the system in Wayland. That was everything that I laid out, along with what we could have done at that time that could have made us even better. Um, come November, it kind of all came full circle at the MECO Directors Association meeting. And this is where all the MECO directors across the state come, and we meet and we talk about, and we talk about the stuff in our district. And my director was one of the guest speakers. And it was, it came full circle for me to hear what he did to make my experience what it was. And then to see all the directors across the state applaud him for being the man to show what this work looks like, to be the man to um, show what directors are supposed to be doing in their district and what districts are supposed to be doing to support their directors. Um, so for me, it, it was interesting to see, like, I was the, the tree, I was the, the student um, that benefited from his plan, um, his vision for what MECO across the state should, 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 should look like. Um, so it came full circle, and it was really exciting for me to see that. Um, today, I kind of want to share with you all some of the things that we did this year um, and from where we started. Um, I quote Carla in, in one of our What is Meco videos, and, and when she said that, you know, we, we heard from Billy, our CEO, and had a candid conversation about the state of Reading Meco, um, which wasn't in a good place, 
And then fast forward to November, at this director's association, I bumped into her, and um, she goes, Curtis, what you all doing in Reading right now is amazing and historic. Um, so a few months, we've been able to move the, the district forward um, and get everyone to support and buy into doing what the work that needs to be done so that everyone can benefit from the program. Um, and then going through my process, you know, one of the, the issues that we're at hand is that no one really knew what METCO was, why it was here. Um, so we did a video and, um, to get that message out. But the first thing I started with was our district leadership trip to Boston. So the first thing on my agenda was to make sure we got everyone from the central office, all of our superintendents, all of our principals to come to Boston, meet with families, and just to see our community. In order to teach your students, you have to know where they come from and what their life is like. And um, in our district, there was just a business, big disconnect between Boston and Reading. And uh, we started the day off with breakfast at Brothers in Mattapan Square. That's the picture here at the bottom. Um, from there, we went to Pope John Park in Dorchester, where we actually ran into the mayor of Boston, Kim Janey, who is a Reading Mecca alum. And from there, we went to Washington Park, where we had an opportunity to meet families. And then my favorite product, the, the picture at the top, we had lunch at Slate's. Um, this, this day was extremely important for me. Um, and again, it comes back, where did I get this idea from? Well, it's what we did in high school. Uh, my senior year of high school, really, we had a race class. We've had it for over 40 years, in which we always came to Boston. And this was actually one of the trips we did as a class, as a senior class, um, to get to know Boston, even though throughout the years, we always, our friends always come to Boston to stay at our homes. Um, so this was a really big day for me to kick it off, to let everyone in our leadership roles know what the program is and what we're trying to do and how we're trying to build a better future for our children. Um, after this, this led to a what is, Me what is MECO video for our staff where all of our principals shared at their school uh, before we started. After that, I conducted a few professional developments with some staff members who also didn't see the video yet. And then we collaborated with school committee um, some of our principals and central office to um, make a video for the community. And once we made that video, you know, the, the emails, the cards from students, from parents, um, just really happy with the vision of what this program can be and how it can benefit every student in the Reddit Public School System. And since that moment, the support has been really great. And um, that's how we kicked off the year. One of the things that Dr. Hardy, Dr. Melly Chesky, and I discussed on that January, July 5th was increasing access for our Boston families. Um, so right off the gate in October with what we had, we were able to add late buses. Um, that was something that we hadn't had in probably more than 15 years, um, if I had to guess off the top of my head. And um, the late buses was important because it allowed the, the high school students who play sports to get home and not have to take an MBTA from, from Reading. It allowed the students who didn't play sports to go to their friend's house and hang out and, and build on their relationships. Um, it allowed kids to go meet with teachers um, and get extra help, and some of our middle school students participate in school plays. Um, when you have the ability to um, connect and build and join in extracurricular activities, that's how we build these friendships and these bonds through sports, drama, plays, and you know, these, so that was really, really important. Um, from there, one of the things is um, I was able to approve what our budget was a lot of the events that we want to do to bring the communities together. We also had Desi approved for the first time an like HBCU tour for our high school students. Uh, we weren't able to go, but that was due to COVID restrictions that the schools have, but that is something that we will be starting next school year and looking to do every single year um, 
to take the kids from Reading um, and kids from Boston, all Reading public school students, to Atlanta to visit some of our HBCUs. Now, what really had things kick off for us is when our school committee increased, approved the enrollment increase of 40 students. Um, that approval allowed us to get the funding to be a real medical program. Um, from there, we were able to, they also approved us to hire five MECO coordinators for our elementary schools. Um, our elementary school is the foundation to building this program, um, and that's where we build all our relationships. Having a MECO coordinator in the schools full time is, is essential. It was essential to my success um, as well. So I'm excited about that. Um, it also allowed us to add a third bus um, to our district, which separated the middle school and high school students. Um, our high school students no longer had to be at school an hour before school started. Um, they now get around maybe 30 minutes, sometimes 40 minutes um, before school. Um, that allowed us to start the buses about 45 to 50 minutes later and still cut the ride down to about an hour and 15 minutes during our winter season. Since the weather got warm, it's actually been a little bit shorter. Um, so again, to repeat, we, we started the bus route 40 to 50 minutes later, and we cut the bus ride from about two, two and a half hours to an hour and 15 minutes. Um, prior, we were driving an hour around Boston before we even got to the bus, to the highway. So that was very, important and huge for increasing access and, and, and getting our kids here who don't no longer have to wake up at like four o'clock in the morning. From there, we were able to increase access by providing transportation so that sophomores and juniors can go to prom. Uh, we was able to increase access by having buses for our February and April Acceleration Academy so that students can, again, get extra support in any type of academic needs that they, they needed to the support in. Um, and that's it for so far for this year for us, increasing our access. So we wanted to make sure everyone knows what the MECO program is. We wanted to increase access for our students, and then we wanted to build community. Um, I first wanted to build community by getting our Boston families together to get to know each other. Uh, we did that with a cake decorating class, uh, along with a paint night. Um, the picture at the bottom is from a few weeks ago where we had our Parker students. Um, we have four girls at the Parker, we were able to pick four friends from Reading and get to go out to um, cutie cake and decorate some cakes and use the time to, to build their relationships and just have a good time in a social environment. To build the community, one of the things I wanted to do is make sure that we are honoring our RO students um, and, and acknowledging that and sending that out to the parents and giving their honor roll lunch for our students. Uh, ready medical gear. We have a lot more gear coming within the next week, but that's important to me for like branding and pride into our school and our program. The most, of, one of the biggest things for the success of my district was the PTO. Uh, I met with every PTO in our district. We went over the video, uh, and I talked about their their our need for their support in the program and building these relationships between our kids. Um, that has been amazing. We're actually meeting again next week, and we're, we're gonna come up with a plan to develop our host families. Um, the PTO will then also reach out to friends of Met Red and Metco to make sure there's some type of liaison, um, and making sure that the message is getting out there to the community and our Reading residents. That is going to be extremely um, important to, to doing this work and, and building the program. Another building community was 
created the medical office in the high school. Um, that has been one of you know one of my top five um, highlights is walking into my office and seeing kids from Boston, from Reading, just hanging out, having a safe space to build, talk, and uh, just have a good time, have a, a home, a place for them to be. Uh, and many times I've walked into the office and there's no kids from Boston, it's just kids from Reading. We're in Reading Echo Air and just hanging out during lunch or during a study. And um, that was one of the things that I felt like in my district we could have been better at. And that's how we really build it. And that's how I want to here so that um, making sure that all the kids know that every student in the Reading Public School student is a mental student. We're all participating in this diversity program to build stronger relationships, to build a better future for our country and our society. And then the Kite Festival. The Kite Festival served as a few things, right? It was making sure that everyone understand this is a two-way street and bringing the Reading community um, to Boston so that they can see our community, see the beauty in our community, and not just whatever it is that they see on the news. Um, it was a way to uh, Reading and our Boston families to build. And there was also an opportunity for me to promote our program to the community. Um, there was a lot of people that I met there that day who were in other medical districts wondering why their district wasn't there, wondering if they needed the transfer. Um, other kids who were alum, other parents, alumni of medical districts wanted to sign up their children for medical and be in Reading because they were so happy just to see us out there in, in our community. So here we just have some of the pictures from the day. And what's next? So as I mentioned with the PTO, um, to really kick this off is the building of the host families. Um, once we get that off the ground, I believe the French of Reddit Mecco uh, mentioned, we have, I've had a lot of emails from people who don't have kids in the school but just wanted to open their homes. Um, but we, I appreciate that, but I really want to make this genuine. I really want kids to build friendships and relationships with their classmates. I really want our parents and the Reading parents getting to know each other and not just sending their kids to a random person home. So the events that Friends of Reading Medical will be doing, the events that we will be doing as a district and that PTOs will be doing is also that the parents can get to know each other and feel comfortable with your kids staying a weekend in Reading and their kids staying a weekend in Boston. We are also working on our MLK dinner, which with the help of the medical coordinators, will coordinate different events for each elementary school to present. Um, we'll have one year we'll be in Boston, the following year we'll go to Reading and we'll flip flop um, to have an annual MLK dinner. We are looking to add an additional space for the high school students. Um, to give them more space in a bigger room because that is starting to grow. We're looking to have a medical awards night at the end of the year where we're highlighting students for learning things about someone different, uh, from someone from a different country, someone from a different religion, or being kind and nice and, and being able to acknowledge them. Lastly, I want to try to bring back the 8th grade DC field trip. Um, this is an opportunity where I was in 8th grade, I went and we visited the Holocaust Museum, but now we have the African American Museum, and this is a lot of great things that I believe we can, um, it's a good opportunity to bring the kids to visit. In this last slide, um, it says, the results of medical when, it, when it's done right, and these pictures are all pictures of me um, and my friends. When it started for me in the second grade, um, I was the only black kid in my class until middle school. Um, this picture to the right is our class. This picture to my left 
as us at the Museum of Fine Arts. Coming to Boston was a normal thing for us in Wayland. And this, this field trip was at the Museum of Fine Arts during the African exhibit. And all these kids here I still talk to. The top picture to my left that I'm pointing at now, um, that was actually my host family, Eric. And this year we all got together at a wedding back in October. In this picture, Eric is my right hand man on my right side. In this picture, he is still on my right hand as my right hand man. And um, being able to get together almost 20 years after high school to still talk with each other, still have our children play with each other is the benefit of what the medical program can be. And that's what I want for all of our kids. And um, I'm excited that we have a strong team uh, from school committee, from central office to principals um, across the district and other directors, and that we're going to build and get there. We do have a lot of work to do, but everyone is committed to doing the work. And that's it for this year. And again, thank you all for, for coming out. So just two quick comments, and then I want to open it up for questions and comments from the committee. One is, um, I liked how on your first slide about building access, you listed off about 15 things that immediately improved access, and then said, well, that's it for that. <laughs> that was a lot. Uh, and then the second thing, I can vouch for the popularity of that room at the high school. I remember being there with you on a Friday afternoon as classes were letting out, uh, and a constant flow of kids coming in and out, which was awesome. A few of them might have been so comfortable there they missed the bus, but you took care of that as well, so, uh, so thank you for that. So, I want to open it up. Any uh, comments or questions from the rest of the committee? And um, we'll open it to the crowd as well. I know you've captured that on a, just a few slides, but the, the tremendous amount of work Curtis has done um, this year has been incredible. Um, the amount of change, the amount of excitement in our district, um, has brought a renewed energy to the program um, in the high school, especially like Sean was saying, the high school is um, an awesome place to be and that space is a, is a great space. So uh, we really appreciate the work that the, the whole team has worked on this year, but especially Curtis and the type of commitment he has and the type of change that he brought to our community. Curtis. Well, I actually have a feedback on that. I walked by, I had a meeting with Principal Tracy yesterday, and I walked by your office expecting to, to wave and say hello to you, and you weren't there, but the room was full. So uh, that was neat. Uh, but just your, your positive energy since the, this is the first time I think I met you was in the end of the August. Uh, So thank you for uh, you know opening at least my eyes to the things that you know I thought that we were doing that we weren't and and uh, you know and your transparency and, and thoughtfulness in, in bringing that to us and, and uh, you know I hope you hang around for a while and, and uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing uh, you're, you're, you're well loved. And program the best in the state. And you said it with such enthusiasm and such conviction. And I think you've shown us this year that you're going to get us there. You're going to get that program there. And um, I agree with what Chuck was saying. Just, just the joy and enthusiasm you bring to the work and the amount that you have been able to accomplish in just one year to show us what this program could be for Reading and Boston families um, and where it can go um, is amazing. It's inspiring and I'm, I'm really appreciative for what you're doing and I'm excited to, to see where we can go with it. Thank you. Well, we got to add one more thing and I'm going to sentiments with the rest of us. 
the folks on the committee about the, um, the tremendous amount of work that's been on this year and just the, the excitement and joy that you bring um, to the district as well around all this work. I think the majority of kids in buildings can identify their teachers, their principal, but probably have basically no idea anybody's on the school committee or anybody. Most people in central office, they probably know Dr. M. But I think the majority of the kids I talk to also know your name, Curtis. So the fact that your name and Dr. M are right up there with work, you're present, you're visible in our schools, and it's really exciting. So I echo the thank you. Uh, I also echo a thank you to all of our, our building principals, who I know we have a few today, who are uh, working really closely with our families and our students day in and day out to promote the values and the goals of the NECO program. So thank you to three of our principals in front and all the others who weren't here with us tonight. Uh, I would also like to share too that I'll, actually, I'll start with a, a, a trivia question too. Uh, Mr. Martin has tricked me up a couple of times on this. We'll see if I can, if anyone can get this. I'm wondering if anyone can tell me how many METCO students there are in Reading Public Schools. They want to raise their hand. If you want to raise it, you, you may get a wrong answer. So I just want to, I don't want to embarrass the public on video. How many, how many, how many, how many uh, METCO students do we have? There's one hand in there. 112. 112. Incorrect. 28, incorrect. 55, incorrect. Oh, you want a hint? How many? 52, incorrect. 40, incorrect. 87. 87, incorrect. Higher. I'll give you the give me a hint. Yeah. Incorrect. So, anyone? Well, that's a hint. How many? Moses? 210. A little more. We just got a hit back there. <laughs> Teresa? All the students Does anyone have the exact figure of that today? I would need to look back. Mr. Brand? No. <laughs> Ms. Patan? Four. So it was uh, right around slightly less than 4,000 students. So the last time we checked, it was 39, 50 more or less. So the reason why, does anyone know why I share that? Can anyone explain that? Who can explain what? 4,000 students are Metro students? Danielle? Because Metro is a good education, you know, they say it's good to go up and their parents can do it. Good education, though. So, Danielle is saying it's a good education, and I agree. And all of our students that have that good education. So, and, I, and, and Mr. Martin and others ask, ask that trivia question to people when they join on. And I think that it can be kind of turned into a joke, but it's for us, it's important to show that every student who is a Reading Public School student is a, is a METCO student. This is a program that is at the, the core of who we are as a district, what we believe in, in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion. The types of that our students learn best in diverse learning environments, uh, learn best with students of all different backgrounds, whether that's racially, ethnically, linguistically, uh, different life experiences. Um, so every student in Reading Public Schools is a METCO student, and that's something that we believe at our core. So again, anyone who would like to come up to share any reactions, thoughts, or questions, but um, again, next time, we all know, 4,000 is the answer. Anyone? I have a question, but I don't need a mic, I'm Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, the MECO coordinators at the elementary school is, is going to be a, a lot of help. Um, and one thing I thought of, I forgot to put like what's next is I mean the ultimate goal is to have a coordinator in every single building. So next we're trying to figure out how do we get coordinators in both our middle schools and our high school. And um, but yes, I appreciate that. And um, and I'm good. I'm good. I know you. I thank you for recognizing that, but. All I need is from everyone from Boston, everyone from Reading to participate, show up, um, be involved in the events that Friends of Reading Echo was doing, any event that we're doing as a district. If we can get that consistent from both our Reading and Boston communities, um, then that's all the help that I need. I 
love, this is a front rather than class for so many things, I love it, thank you. Uh, I'll share one other thing too on the METCO coordinator, Kurt spoke a little bit, so in the budget this year, for next year, is a uh, five uh, elementary METCO coordinator slash uh, school counselors uh, in every one of our schools. So what that role is, it's a new role. The role is, first of all, in terms of the METCO coordinators, to be a direct liaison between our Boston resident families, Boston resident students, uh, and the, the METCO program. Uh, and also to be a school counselor and social worker to all students, Boston residents and Reading residents in our community. So we think that having that role will not only support Curtis, but also provide more support to all of our families and to our students. I'd also say that we've hired two of those roles already. We've hired an educator at Killam. We've hired uh, also an educator at, uh, at Birch. Uh, both are educators of color. Uh, I will share that we also view this role as it's critically important that in a district that is, uh, right now our staffing, our staff is 98% white. We believe that we have a lot of work to do to have a, a uh, educator force that resembles the diversity of our students. Um, so we realize that we need to uh, find ways to recruit, retain staff of color. And we're encouraged that uh, in these roles, these first two roles that uh, we found, we've got excellent, awesome school counselors in these roles. Um, it is important for our students of color to be able to see uh, students of uh, educators of color. It's also important for our white students to be able to work with educators of color in our district. So we're excited uh, initially for that. And certainly, uh, that's not just unique to those roles, but also as a district, uh, hiring uh, candidates of color throughout our district is also a, a continued priority. So I just wanted to share that as you asked, spoke a little bit about those roles, give an update of just where we stand with the hiring of those roles. Too. And I, I see a couple of hands. I'm glad that you touched upon them being um, staff of color, we needed that, but maybe it's the wording in your, your for the hiring process, because I was on the committee that um, hired her, that means we voted in it, but the first round that we had, we had to read, I did a portion of it, we had to rewrite um, for the Um, so you're absolutely right, and uh, we, we've addressed that in the way we went about hiring our coordinators, the way we go to hire um, any staff member to, in, um, to try to encourage staff of color to apply. So yes, um, when you're trying to do that, the wording and job descriptions is important. Um, having patience to allow people to apply instead of moving so quickly. And then uh, as we've been going through this process, um, even if it's for, for people of color, uh, for non-people of color, we're looking for what is your cultural add to our district? What are you gonna bring that we don't have that we need? Um, so that's another thing that we talked about with our HR director. And, um, I appreciate you raising that. We realize that the hiring process, it goes all the way from uh, recruitment, how are we recruiting? Uh, also, what is, you know, job descriptions, interview, how are we making sure the process everyone on board, you know, uh, understands and is on the same page with how we're looking at candidates and their qualifications. So I think you gave a perfect example of one space where we need to do better, and I think we're doing some work, but also realize that as part of the hiring process, there's a lot of phases that we need to do to make sure that we can get the educators that we want in front of our students. So thank you, thank you for raising that feedback. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Ms. Lestrade? Um, I just want to say that we don't just need um, counselors and coordinators. We also need educators um, because they're not j the students don't just need counseling um, and um, social workers. They need to see educators. Um, we need to get more education, uh, educational curriculum, um, cultural curriculum. We need to just and be open to just diversifying a lot of areas. I know that we're working on that at the high school. Um, I strongly recommend when we start hiring for the high school that we do include a good amount of students because 
the people at the high school are going to be working with the students and they need to understand the student demographic that they're working with um, and they definitely need to be um, part of that hiring process. Um, not just one or two, but maybe you know two from Reading, two from Boston, because again, th these are people that they're going to be working with. And high school is a little different than elementary, as we all know. Um, elementary students gravitate to anybody that makes them happy, right? High school students, you got to do a lot more, and so they have to be willing and ready to understand the students that they're working with, because it's not as easy. A lot of you have already raised grown kids, so who've graduated college or high school. Um, and just understanding that they don't just need social workers, they need educators, they need principals, they need um, nurses, they need it all throughout the um, curriculum and through it, education. Um, I'm not sure how I forgot this, but speaking to, you know, Shirley you reminded me. Um, I also, I forgot to mention that next year we will have a race class at the high school for our juniors and seniors. Um, I'm extremely excited about that because I'm going to co-teach it um, with our history director. Um, and then also the class is a built off of exactly what we did at Wayland High School. Uh, my teacher in Wayland who taught it for 40 plus years has been working directly with me one-on-one -on -one to build the curriculum, sending me um, course materials, um, and I've been excited to obviously reconnect with my old high school teacher. But you know, I've taken race classes in high school. Um, I've taken it when I was at Clark Atlanta as a student, and I've taken it at UMass Boston. And my high school class was by far the best. Um, so I'm extremely about, I'm excited about that. And um, that next year will be the first year to kick it off, and we'll be growing it and uh, moving from there. Um, will that race course then trickle down, um, maybe um, diluted some for the younger grades? Because I believe the education starts um, as early as preschool. Because we don't learn, we don't wake up hating people, we learn it. Um, so I think it's something that's taught from the bottom up. Yeah, so that was one of the things that uh, we also talked about July 5th when uh, Dr. Hardy and uh, Dr. Miller just met. Um, you know, for me as a student, we talk about race all the time. Talking about race in elementary school is completely different than middle school and high school, but we was privy to it. Uh, we was exposed to it um, and in a healthy way that brought us all together and made us think. Um, so what did that look like? Um, it was obviously, I talked about this in the beginning of the year, it was the imagery um, and before we entered the building, inside the building, in our classrooms, the books that we read. Um, you know, during Black History Month, it wasn't just Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. Uh, one of the stories I tell is that I, in the third grade, I was given Sojourner Truth, and I was upset because I had no idea who Sojourner Truth was, and I wanted Martin Luther King. Um, my teachers told me, get what you get, you don't get upset. And I learned about something new, someone new that I didn't know about. Um, so these are all things that we are definitely working on um, and building towards. So yes. Okay, last question. So thank you very much, and I'm just want to let you know, guys. And I really like um, the co program because I used to have my daughter, now 30 years old, used to be on program on the co program. At that time, the office for me school used to be a very human street over there, okay? But, so I have a question. My question could be a little bit outside that. Because the things will happen now, I would say, see if we have a possible way we could ask for, to add middle detective on all the school would be a safety for the teacher and for the student. Yeah, just one thing I'll say to that. Um, you know, we've not had any discussion today about metal detectors. The, the, the town of Reading did approve, I think, a $4 million or so project around school and building security a couple of years ago, and most of those, most of those enhancements 
where in the schools and most of those enhancements have been made. So things like, um, you know, ensuring that there are, you know, only secured doors to enter the building when school is in session and improving the, uh, the, the, you know, the video systems and other things that sort of enhance security and enhance law enforcement's ability to respond in the case of an issue. Um, the question of metal detectors is not is not one that's come up uh, that's not come up in discussions and writing, but um, we have invested quite a bit in enhancing the security in our schools. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Martin or otherwise? Yes, ma'am. My flags are the Haitian flag and the Puerto Rican flag, different ethnic flags. Um, we were told that we couldn't hang them in the high school because it was a fire hazard, but um, we have just gained information that other schools do have flags hung up and walking into this school just reminds me of this, um, seeing my flag hung up in the cafeteria. I don't know if that's the cafeteria, but um, that just felt really welcoming. I just wanted to know why we wouldn't have been able to do it in Reading Memorial High School and if we can get that going. Great, great question. Um, so I also, I believe I'm meeting with the group here on Tuesday, on the 23rd, 10, 12 a.m., is that it? Um, and I apologize, I had to push our meeting back. So I was supposed to meet with this group um, to be able to speak about flags, particularly the, the Pan American flag, uh, to be hung in some of our schools. So we're discussing that on, on Tuesday. And to be honest, uh, I don't have a lot of the context on why that's a, it would be a, a barrier. So um, hearing this additional context, I'll come prepared to our meeting on Tuesday to have some more of the background to know if there's certain things in place that would hold us back so that I can work to try to possibly resolve some of those things. So uh, I, I can't answer that on the floor as I don't, have, I don't have the answer, but I will be prepared to speak to that when I meet with you on Tuesday. I'm hopeful that we can, uh, in the way that you speak about that, the way that makes you feel welcome and included and, and a sense of belonging when you walk into the cafeteria, I think is really important. So I look forward to the conversation. Thank you. Um, just one comment. On the Pan American flag that they're going to be meeting with you about, they were looking to have it hung on all the flagpoles at each of the schools. Um, but due to the new flag policy that the um, government has um, now put in effect, we understand that that's not possible, but they're talking about like within the school building. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm in the conversation, we can talk about everything. And I, I certainly, as I shared earlier on tonight, I think the most powerful thing to make change is, is student advocacy. So whether there's policies or procedures or things that are stuck, I think that you advocating. Uh, I appreciate this, the student sent me an email and asked to meet to have this conversation. So um, I'm eager to have the conversation and I, I think generally um, we can work through barriers if we can reach a shared understanding of why it's important for students particularly around making students feel safe while they're in their schools. So thank you. Okay. Last call on this topic. <laughs> Great. So, oh. One thing. She got one more in. Go ahead. <laughs> I lied. It was one more thing. Um, I just wanted to recognize um, Shadishna Strategy. She is Reading's new diversity and equity um, and social justice person. And so I wanted to welcome her. That's a great segue to our next agenda item, which is Dr. Chatterjee. So I do want to, uh, we have one more guest presenter. I want to take this one out of order as well, if that's okay with the committee. So I'll make a motion that we take out of order item E4, the pair liaison assignment. Is there a second? I saw Aaron first. All in favor? 
All opposed? Okay, we'll take it out of order. So Dr. Chatterjee, I'd love to invite you up to tell us a bit more about your role in the advisory group that you're, you're creating, and then we'll have a brief school committee discussion. Hi everyone, sorry, I'm having a really bad throat situation going on, but it's not COVID, so I'll keep it brief. I'm the new director of Equity and Social Justice, based out of the Reading Public Library. I'm based out of the library, but I exist as a shared resource across town. Uh, one of the first things that we're getting started with is creating an advisory board. Uh, we have town liaisons from across all departments, including the schools. We have some amazing students who are coming on board, which is what I'm most excited about. Um, and of course, parents, residents, business owners, it's, it's really a very diverse group of people who feel excited about it and decided to come on board. We are still accepting applications, so the deadline is, I believe, June 1st. Uh, all of the information is available on the town website, um, so if you're interested, please do feel free to shoot me an email. Um, and the students shared one of our first events that we are kind of co-facilitating with the SoCal group is Juneteenth. Uh, we have a movie night, we are getting Central Lewis and um, April, sorry, I can't remember his name. Um, Jamil Jamal, Adams. Jamal Adams. Uh, two guest speakers will kick off the event, and then the students were also planning uh, to do like a fundraiser on the side. It's going to be on Washington Park in Reading. Uh, hope to see some of you there. Please try to make it. Uh, we're hoping it's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you for having me here. Very excited. Okay, so we can't formally assign a liaison tonight because that's Tom's uh, role, but I wanted to uh, open it up for school committee members who might be interested in, in representing us as a liaison on that advisory group. I'm happy to raise my hand first if nobody's falling all over themselves. But... How often do you anticipate the group meeting? So we're planning to meet about once every month, third Wednesdays, 6 to 7.30 p.m. We'll try to do a hybrid. We want to do it in person at the library, but we'll also have like a Zoom running in case folks can't make it. That's the schedule. Okay. I'm happy to second that. All right, okay. Okay, so um, I think three of us could show up at any given meeting without running into any issues, so we'll uh, pass Aaron's Name along to Tom to formally announce, and you'll probably see me at most of those meetings as well. So, Great. thank you. Thank you thank very much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, our next item of business is policy JFBB, which is the policy on school choice. So, Aaron, um, would you like to report out on behalf of the policy subcommittee, and then we'll start the discussion? So what you all have in the packet is a clean version, which essentially incorporates the edits. Um, I think Tom mentioned there may have been one or two sort of uh, just typos that he corrected as well. Um, there was also a back and forth with, with our council this week, which Aaron, I think you were on that email thread as well, but um, a back and forth with our council this week, and, and she clarified that um, one thing that's in the current clean version of the policy that we should probably address is the legal references at the bottom. 71.6, 71.6a, 76.6, 76.12. Um, those all relate to students' um, 
coming to the Reading schools, but they're not specific to school choice, they're not really about school choice. So her uh, suggestion was that we remove those references and only retain 7612B uh, in, the, in the legal references section at the bottom. <clears throat> so I'm gonna, when we make the motion, I'm gonna propose that we make that adjustment. Um, is there any other discussion? Go ahead, Merlin. So the, the legal references, you know, in uh, policy, it's to me, folks, maybe check me if I'm wrong here, I believe those are um, remnants from the old version of the policy. I don't think those were pulled directly from mass necessarily. So any other any other uh, thoughts or edits on the clean version? Otherwise, I'll offer a motion to accept this with the edit about the legal references at the bottom. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to actually offer the motion. Sorry, I, <laughs> I realized what I did there. Um, so I move that we uh, let me go to my motion so I don't wing it because that's always dangerous. Um, now I'm all flustered. Here we go. All right. Too many things going on at once. All right, I move to approve the edits to policy JFBB as presented in the packet and revised on the floor. Is there a second? Yeah. I think Carla beat you to the punch, Chuck. So Carla is a second. Any other discussion? Go ahead, Chuck. So, this is our first reading, correct? It, uh... So we're, uh, we're using the policy on adoption policy, which allows us, if the edits are submitted to the committee more than a week in advance, and they were submitted to us last week, um, to be able to uh, to be able to amend the policy in a single meeting. And since these edits were generally sort of modernization edits versus you know, fundamental ones, I think Tom saw it as appropriate to use, use that process. Can I ask one clarifying question? I'm not sure if this is for Tom or Susan. So, we, ha we had a whole discussion about uh, bullet number six and the language there. Um, ultimately, we decided to leave the language, but we wanted to make sure that it means what we think it means, which is that um, if a family has a child already in the district through school choice and the subsequent year they have a sibling applying, that sibling will automatically get a spot if there is one. They won't actually have to go through the lottery. They would just get a spot if there is one. Is that, that was our understanding. But, so we, we had a whole debate about the language. So ultimately, we said, we'll leave it. We'll just clarify that, that it means that. OK, thank you. OK, any further discussion before we take a vote on this one? Comment from the audience? No? All right. Want to give you a shot. Um, OK. All in favor? Or all, all Yes. All in favor? All opposed? OK. Carries 5-0. Um, so our next order of business, and we've got just two more pieces on the agenda here, um, is to approve the membership of the RMHS Track Renaming Committee. So the, uh, as the memo in the packet, packet describes, I think two meetings ago, we voted to create this committee um, we identified sort of, you know, generally who the membership would be, and I think we appointed Chuck at that time as the school committee liaison. Um, Tom Wise has worked in the interim to sort of fill out the rest of the roles here. So uh, the building principal, obviously, the relevant one in this case is Kevin Tracy. Um, Tom Zaya worked with the track coaches to, to select a student representative, so that'll be Olivia Rotondo. The select board appointed Carlo Bacci to this role. The historical commission appointed Christine Keller. And then uh, Tom worked with the chamber, uh, with, with our economic development coordinator, maybe with a few other folks to solicit uh, applications from business leaders. And he's recommended John Means. Um, John is a Reading resident. He uh, has several kids in the school district. He ran track against Halcroft as a Stoneham High grad. Um, and so he, he holds himself as somebody who's fairly um, unbiased about this. And you know, it wasn't somebody who sort of directly benefited from from Hal's efforts over the years. So um, so that's who Tom has proposed for us to include as the business leader. 
Um, so the motion on this would be move to approve the membership of the RMHS track renaming committee as detailed in the packet. Is there a second? And then I'll chuck seconds. Any discussion or questions about this? Any discussion from the audience? Okay. Uh, so we'll move to the vote. All in favor? And all opposed? And it carries five to zero. And our last uh, order of business tonight is to approve the final FY23 operating and capital budgets as appropriated by town meeting. So um, I'll we'll take the motion in a moment, but Ms. Baton, I'll, I'll kick it to you to um, provide any background you'd like. I just had one question. Um, you know, we voted to accept the two million dollars uh, in ARPA funding this evening. How, how is that actually going to flow um, as those dollars are spent? Is it going to sit in a revolving account and pay directly from there? Yes. So Sharon Engstrom, our finance director, town accountant, has set up the funds in a special revolving account and has provided us with that account number. We're going to be issuing the balance of year one's uh, curriculum order this week. We've met with the vendor, um, we'll place that order that will take us through the next school year. Um, also, I'm working with the procurement officer, Allison Jen Jenkins, at the town to develop a brief three-year um, agreement for FY24, 25, 26 with the vendor. And we'll be issuing that by the end of June 30th in order to ensure that the funds that are sitting in the revolving fund are duly obligated. Any other comments from the committee before I open it up to the, the audience? Okay, Ms. Lestrade, did you have a question or comment? Um, I just have one question. If we are potentially planning to move RISE to Killam um, and we include an assessor and an architect, isn't that funds that we're, we have to pay that person that could be on hold until we decide what we're doing with Killam? 
um, that might be aimlessly spent? Yes, at this time we have $12,000 set aside for design and development. We don't need to engage the architect immediately to develop um, the design or plan. Um, FY24, we have dollars set aside for the actual construction of the playground. But until we go through the eligibility process with Kilim, it's unlikely that we'll be spending those funds. Okay, my last comment is, as an educator whose classroom is directly above the Rice Preschool Playground. Um, I definitely vote on moving it from um, the high school because it's quite distracting. Um, it's nice to see the kids playing, but it is quite distracting um, as high school students are trying to learn and little ones are outside having a, the time of their life. So that's just my thought. Okay. <coughs> Any other comments or questions before we move to the vote? So the motion on this one, I move to approve the final FY23 operating and capital budgets as appropriated by annual town meeting in April of 2022. Is there a second? Chuck seconds. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? All opposed? And it carries 5-0. And I will entertain one final motion. Chuck, would you like to second? Motion to adjourn by Carla, seconded by Chuck. All in favor? And all opposed. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.